right, well, it's four o'clock and just want to welcome everyone today. If we can go ahead and go to the next slide, and we can welcome you guys. All right, again, <laughs> welcome back to our class two for Muskogee Youth Beads. Hello, Hishe, welcome everyone. My name is Samantha, and I'm one of your co-presenters for today. And our other co-presenter is Jasmine Buckley, and she is taking a quick water break really quick. <laughs> so we can go ahead and go to the next slide while I introduce a little bit more information about what we're gonna do today. Um, so of course, as you can see on your screen, um, with the Zoom, we have a couple of features that you guys are gonna be able to use. So we aren't able to see you, but you can see us, um, but you can use the Q&A. Uh, feature down at the bottom and it might be at the bottom of your screen and you can also use the chat feature if you have any questions or comments or um, you just want to make a joke that's awesome <laughs> that would be cool too so um, if you want to test it out and let us know who's all here where you guys are all from right now and you can put that in the chat box kind of let us know um, what area you, you guys are at and that'll be helpful to us too as well. All right, so we can go to the next one. And uh, so a little bit of information about our program. We're Muskogee Nation Youth Services. Um, as you can see, um, one of our or our program mission is to empower Muskogee youth by connecting them uh, connecting youth to culture, community, and resources. And as you can see listed also are some of our program goals, which include fostering advocacy, providing resources, promoting civic duty, encouraging wellness, and creating support. And for us today, as we have been saying, um, one of the main goals for our Muskogee Youth Beads is to encourage wellness. Um, and it's also actually created support among like some of our participants and people that have already registered or have taken the last class with us. So, you know, we're getting updates on them or what they're doing, even with uh, some of the new skills that they have done. I heard that one of our um, participants has actually made several of them and oh, yeah? is helping raise money for a program um, that she's a part of. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's, you know, providing a resource right there for you guys, mm -hmm. um, but also encouraging wellness. And that's one of the main goals that we wanted to focus on was um, for beating, connecting you and helping you to be connected to um, your culture and our culture. And although, you know, as Muskogee people, we may not have always been beaters you know this is you know a new skill that we have all um learned to do and have fun doing and so this is something that we can actually uh take care of ourselves in doing this too so oh, we had a couple of questions too yeah somebody already asked will this be recorded yes it is being recorded and we'll also post it up onto our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So you can just find us on YouTube. And then um, I think I put it under um, traditional, um, oh, what is it? It's, it's something traditional playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what it is. We have so many that we've, we've mm -hmm. created. But it also has different uh, tutorials on it. I know it has one for uh, how to make a skirt mm -hmm. by Nina Fox, one of our youth council members. So be sure to check that out yeah if you are not subscribed to our youtube channel oh, yes. with youth council youth services go do it it's pretty cool there's a lot of different things um gosh past events that are on there uh, things that we're currently involved in and then like jasmine said you know more resources to let you all understand and want to learn how to connect even more into our, our culture and learn how to make a ribbon skirt. I'm gonna yeah. have to check that out because <laughs> I don't sew, that's not in my toolbox, but that's something <laughs> I would like to do. <laughs> all right, we can go to the next slide. Please. Aaron is running our slides on the back side for us. He's all the way in Muskogee right now. Oh, there we are. <laughs> well, that's us, and you can see us already in ways. 
And let's go ahead and go to the next slide. One more over. All right, so again, you know, we just wanted you guys to know a couple of things that you're gonna need. Uh, one thing is comfy clothes. Wear something comfortable. Last class, I wore a dress. <laughs> Don't ask me why I did, but I wore a dress and I was not as comfortable. I wore a t-shirt or my polo, my Muskogee E-Services polo. Oh, yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, we're comfortable today, so that's good. Also, your basic bead box, which hopefully everyone has gotten their supplies, um, and you should have everything that you need for class number two, which is what we're doing today, in your box. So if you haven't gotten it out yet, go ahead and get it out for us and make yourself comfortable because we're going to go ahead and go on to that. Also, make sure that if you have additional supplies, which that was some of the things that were suggested in one of the emails and also with your registration was that you might need some glue for this one. So this is one of the glues. I don't know if you can actually see it. Oh, let me see. I was like, I forgot to go way <laughs> up there. <laughs> and this is called Quick Grip. Um, this is a glue that um, Jasmine liked to use and then she passed it on to me, which <laughs> is an awesome glue. Use it for all kinds of stuff. And then you might also need a plier for today. So we have like a little needle nose plier. You might need that today too. Or so. AKA what Sam likes to call it, a bead yes. buster. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bead buster, busting beads. Um, and then also make sure that you have a good workspace, which Jasmine has hooked us up and you will see that soon. And also good lighting, um, courtesy of Muskogee Nation Services. <laughs> you can see our bright and kind of shiny faces I today. Really see faces today. <laughs> Yeah, and so, all right, so if anybody has any questions, go ahead, you can put it in the chat. Looks like we got something in there. Oh, thank you so much, yeah. Um, so just wanted to give a little shout out to all of these people that are here. There's actually somebody from Holdenville. So hey, Hannah, Oklahoma City, Yafala. Um, somebody is Naya, and I think from like, Tulsa, maybe? Oh, there's oh, Mugtown yeah, in the house. <laughs> uh, Phoenix. Oh, Isabel. Hey, Phoenix. I bet it's hot today. <laughs> there's Easton, Shakota, Okima, Telequal. Awesome. Tulsa. Yep. And we're here live in Morris, Oklahoma. Yes. So, yes, we're here. <laughs> Oh, Muskogee, all right. Another Muskogee, Aaron's in Muskogee too, so awesome. Um, so Packard's back on, Duran. Hey Packard, I hope you did good <laughs> at track last weekend. <laughs> um, we go, uh, can we go ahead and go to the next slide and we'll get ready to get started. Oh, what we got planned. <laughs> oh yeah, um, so our first class we did the looped earrings, which mm -hmm. is the picture in the middle. We had tons and tons. Um, mine's not finished, so don't look at that <laughs> one. But you guys did amazing on that. We had a bunch of pictures sent in. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I made a little hype video or like behind the scenes. So make sure to check that out on our Facebook, Instagram, even Twitter. Um, so now this class is the beaded cabochon earrings, which is the picture on the bottom. And it's just a little bitty mini ones that we're gonna start you guys out with just mm -hmm. because we don't wanna overwhelm you too much on doing like this big old piece. Mm -hmm. um, and then now our last class, which is in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. on November 4th, it's gonna be our rope keychains. So it's just gonna be a little mini something just real small, put your keys on. Mm -hmm. That one's um, a little bit more complicated. We try to build it up for <laughs> you guys just so, again, get you a little bit used to beating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's what our little series we have going on right now. Yay. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Next slide, please. As we get ready. All right, close your room. All right, so we're going to get started. So if we can get the screen on us, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to say that. Yeah, we need the screen on us. Um, so some of the first things that we're going to do is like uh, hopefully everyone has all their things that they're going to need out already. Please make sure you have those out. I'll, I'll get the book. Yep, okay. Jasmine's actually going to grab the book for us. If you have your book or if you have your little pamphlet, your booklet, 
Um, I know some of you guys actually got those this time. Um, make sure that's out because that's going to help you follow along. And if you need more help, more direction with that, that'll actually give you a lot more detail yeah. to that. So this is your book. This is like almost like your Bible for, <laughs> for beating your big instruction guide. And this one, there we go. It'll say beaded cab earrings on the bottom. So this is the one that we're going to actually go over today. Mm. All right. So is everybody ready? <laughs> Let I'll me see. know that you're ready. Got your supplies. You got your book. Mm -hmm. Just sign off on the in the comments or in the chat, should I say. Mm -hmm. I was like... Packard's ready. I feel like Packard is always ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel like Packard's ready. Yep. All right. Krista, thanks for joining us. Hannah's ready. Whitney's ready. All right. Awesome. All right. All right. Wow. So let's get started. So we're just going to go over the supplies, what you should have gotten for your uh, class two. So you should have gotten your beads. Mm -hmm. We gave, for this class, three packets. So these are the ones that me and Sam have picked out for us. You should have also gotten a little bobbin of thread. Mine have this big old <laughs> little, like, I guess, I don't know. Spool. Was, yeah, there we go. <laughs> a, a, little, a mini spool. No. <laughs> um, you should have gotten some scissors, mm -hmm. which like this, or I don't know. My handy dandy little scissors right here. These are my favorite ones to use. Then you should have gotten some um, needles. Mm -hmm. I think you believe you had like two, two needles. So hopefully you guys can see that. And then last but not least, you got, well, almost last but not least. Mm -hmm. um, you should have gotten some calves, just some different ones. Yeah, not everyone didn't all get the same size calves either. Some yeah. got smaller calves, some got bigger calves. So we just kind of mix them all up. Yeah. So, and then now, last but not least, some pieces of backing or leather, whatever you want to call it. And this is what you're going to put on the back of your earring whenever you're finished. And your studs. Oh, yeah, and your studs. They're teeny tiny ones. Your little posts. Okay. Yay. All right. So, everybody, bring out your handy dandy little instruction guide. And I want to try my best to follow along with this because I know last time I got a little bit ahead. <laughs> so, we are going to start off with step one. So, it says to glue down your, uh, your cab on your pillin, which we already did that for you guys. We didn't want, really want you guys to get all messy or anything and worry about it falling off or anything like that. So we did that step for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then next, you are going to cut about three feet of thread. You can use three feet if you want, but I always say work with what you're comfortable with. So go ahead um, and get your little thread. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you guys should have also gotten like a little oh. card. Ethan didn't get a book. Oh, oh, we'll have to send you one. Mm -hmm. We'll send you one. Yeah. But yeah, um, even though we're following the book, we're still we're going to show yeah. you guys and do it. Okay. So first step, your thread. Like that. And you can use whatever you're comfortable with. If you only think you can only handle a little bit. Go ahead and put a little bit. If you handle like a lot, you can do a lot. <laughs> I usually, I always like working with like a wingspan's worth. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you're gonna run your thread through some beeswax, which is optional. We didn't give uh, any beeswax to you guys um, just because I think supplies were very limited. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very limited. I think they were actually sold out from the people that we mm -hmm. were trying to get them from. But usually this is what it looks like. It's just like a little bar. It almost looks like bar soap. Or butter. Hard, hard <laughs> butter. Yes, hard butter. Yeah. But 
usually what this beeswax does, it helps with fraying from tangling up. Um, it's really almost like a, a conditioner, I guess, for your thread. It's optional, you don't have to use it. Um, so just because, or we don't, we didn't give you any wax today, so we're not gonna use any either, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. So next, you're going to then thread your needle, which I know some people, <laughs> that's hard for them to do. <laughs> I like threading the needle. I don't have good eyesight, but I feel like it makes me feel like I have good eyesight. <laughs> Cause she can just go right through and she's done. I'm like, man, yeah, how'd you do that? She already has like five needles done and I just finished one. I'm gonna fix this. So, me. Okay. so just go ahead and thread your needle. You're just gonna get your thread and run it through the eye of your needle. And my sister said something in the chat. I actually thread my needle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sister is one of those ones that has a hard time threading her needle. She's always running to me like, sister, I can't thread this. Can you get it? So yeah, for her to do that on a second try, that's a big accomplishment for her. <laughs> Okay, so you're just gonna run it through like that and just pull a little bit just to have like, I guess a little bit of a tail. So if you guys can see that. Yeah, you're just, you're not pulling it all the way through, just pulling it in enough. So you have just that little bitty tail. Okay. Now you're gonna go to the other end of your thread and you're going to make a double knot or you can just make a knot one knot two knots however many knots you know you feel like is secure enough for your thread so sam's already ready she like <laughs> had her needle all threaded ready to go i'm gonna re-thread it <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you just made a little little knot at the end of your thread. Okay, so everybody have that. Everybody have their needle threaded and have a knot at the end of their thread. Boom, first try. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh oh, somebody's like, no, not yet. Okay, you're good. You're yeah, good. you're good. We'll make sure we don't leave anybody behind. We'll try our best not to. <laughs> okay. um, so all you're doing is just putting in your thread through your needle and just kind of pulling it just a little bit just so you have a little bit of a little tail. Yeah, a little tail. A little hudgy word of the day. <laughs> and then you're going to go way on this opposite end of your thread. Oop. Let me put that down. Just way on the opposite end. And then you're just going to make a double knot or just one knot. The other end. It goes on the other end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, because here's your needle. Hopefully, I'm gonna close that so I can see. And then you have, you still have this long tail right here. And this is the end where you're gonna make your knot at. Oh my God. Yeah, so one end, you'll have your thread or your needle, and the other end, you'll have your knot. I'm trying to make it where they can see it really good. And I think that's Reagan. <clears throat> so if you've got like one piece of backing in there, it's probably because 
you might have gotten like a smaller center so it would actually split it you should be able to split that backing into two pieces um just because like you don't want to waste it or anything and we're only doing maybe three rows maybe two rows just depending yeah probably maybe two mm -hmm. just to get everybody started yes yes the beads for class two are supposed to be in the class two bag um if you have beads left over from the class before you can use those beads too as well if you want to um because there should have been beads in every bag yeah for every class hopefully we didn't miss that if we did if we missed your beads we are so sorry yeah Oh, I don't have any for class two. Okay. Okay. Well, you can still follow along with us, and you know, you take notes, um, any yeah. tips and things like that. Um, we'll make sure to send you your beads. We'll for sure we'll mail them to you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we're we have this recorded, and we're going to mm -hmm. post it on our YouTube channel, so that way you can follow along. Good. Okay. 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 Yeah. Good. We're so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Maybe they got mixed up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we apologize for yeah. that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and send you guys some more beads. What's the name on YouTube? It should, um, it'll have beaded mini caps. I think that's what I'm going to have it on there. Um, you can go just look up Muskogee Youth or mm -hmm. Muskogee Nation Youth Services. It'll pull up our channel. that will have our logo on there, and then it'll have all of our uh, videos on there. Okay. Uh, hands asking about the okay. So after you get your needle threaded, you're gonna go to the opposite end. So here's your needle, and then you. Got your really long <laughs> thread right here, and then you're just gonna double knot it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, if you want, you can cut off the excess. I'm just gonna clip all of just a little bit right above where I made my knot. So I just clip that off. Now, there we go. So, is everybody caught up? I hope so. I hope we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got some yeses. Yes. Yeah. Again, we're terribly sorry that <laughs> we missed your beads. I'm really thinking of what happened. Yeah, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe we just forgot to put it in there because we try to pre-make the bags first, like with mm -hmm. all the supplies, and then put the beads in there. So if you just came in, all we're at is just step one. So you mm -hmm. can look at step one, we're just threading our needle, and then we're type or typing, tying, uh, a knot at the end. Yeah, it looks like we got a few new people that just joined. Yeah, if you have your book, we're on the beaded cap earrings, your booklet, and we're just on step one. Just threading your needle and then tying it at the end. Okay, so now we're going to move on to step two. So starting from underneath your pillin on your, where your cab is, <clears throat> you are going to push your <clears throat> needle up. <clears throat> oh, tickle. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> What? <clears throat> Get a cough drop. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, so up, 
through your pelvis as close as you can to your center. And it should come out <clears throat> kind of like so. Or actually, Aaron, can you um, focus to our other camera, please? <clears throat> I think it's all that talking. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you can focus on our other camera on the table, please. Down here so you can see it. Is it going? <laughs> Not yet. I'm not sure what has happened. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, we got that far. Okay, I think I'm good now. Mm -hmm. It's all that talking I'm doing. Oh, it is on there. Okay, it's not showing up on our on our screens or anything. Sorry about that. Okay. Mm, okay. It's here. All right. <clears throat> Okay. I'll show you guys. Oh, hopefully I don't kick. There you go. You're good. Okay. Uh, it's kind of hard. So you're just going to get your pill in or your cab. I'm trying to look here. Make sure. <laughs> and you're going to bring it up. Like so. Oh, they can't see it either. Oh, hmm. Oh, no. Okay. We're having some technical difficulties. Let's see. Camera. <clears throat> okay. Man, my throat. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a little bit of issues going on right now. And that's interesting. And it should be working. Yeah. Would be working. Okay, so I'll try to walk you guys <clears throat> through it. Hopefully my voice will cooperate. Sam might have to read it. <laughs> okay, so we're just on step two. This is, um, so starting from underneath your pillin, mm -hmm. you're just gonna push your needle up through your pillin. So starting from the bottom, so you have your little bottom. One in is your cab. So we're starting from here. Oh, okay. I think we finally got it fixed. Can everybody see our, my, I guess, my big hand? <laughs> okay. There okay. it goes. All right. Man, my throat. <laughs> it's all this talking. No. Okay. So, now we're here. So, starting from underneath. So usually you can just, if you're right-handed, I hold my cab in my left. Or if you're left-handed, I hold it, you'll just hold it in your right hand. And you're gonna take your needle, so then get close. And you can just start anywhere you want. And you're just gonna push it up like that. And then try to get as close as you can to your your cap, but just leave just that little bitty space like you see here. And then just pushing the needle up and then you're gonna pull it all the way through like that. And when you pull it all the way through, that little knot that you had at the end, it'll actually stop it. So, see, 
that knot stopped it. So now you have your thread attached. So does everybody have that? Oh, <laughs> that was from earlier. All the yeses. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Make sure there's no questions. All right. Oh, she's already on the beads. All right. Then. All right. Crystal. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We see you. We see you. Okay. So now you can then string on 10 beads. So I have my beads picked out right here. Sam has hers in uh, my handy dandy coasters. <laughs> I love them. So you can just pick out any pattern you like with your beads that you have, um, whatever you want. I'm gonna show you guys an example of one that I already kind of uh, have finished. So this is what mine looks like. I just did something simple. You guys can do something simple. You can even just do one color because some tabs look really pretty with just one color. I just have one color on yeah. one of mine. Just blue so far. So just pick up 10 beads of whatever color you want. Hmm. I'm trying to think which ones do I want. Uh, the most count. <laughs> So here's my 10 beads. I have five white, two blue, one gray, and two blue again. Okay, and then once you get that, you're just gonna push your beads all the way down. Like so. So does everybody have that part? Everybody got their beads picked out? Get crazy. If you hear me kind of smacking, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> just, this, I actually got a candy and not a cough drop, <laughs> but it's helping my throat. Okay, I think everybody got it. Okay. So next step, step three, it says line your beads up against your center. So you're just gonna, what I like to do is kind of follow along with my cab and I use this thumb to hold my thread. So I just get, swing it around and just push it underneath my thumb. And it's holding it just like that. And then I push my beads all the way down from to the beginning. Oh my god, it's squeaky. Okay. And then now, trying to get it to focus. After you get your beads kind of pushed down, you want to get your needle. And you're going to push it down like that. And make sure you leave that little bitty space that you see going on right here. See that little gap? Leave that just a little bitty gap. Almost like um, as if there was another bead right in here. So you're just getting your needle and pushing it down. Make sure there's that little bitty space because what we're gonna do is we're gonna tack it in between each bead. And when you tack it down, um, it actually moves your beads. So this kind of gives that little bit of breathing room for it. Uh, no, you don't push it through the thread. My is kind of actually like right next to the thread. I don't know if you can see that. And push that. It's just like 
right next to the thread. Okay. Now once you get that, you're going to push it all the way down. And then just pull your thread all the way through. So that way it holds it down, just like that. So see? Just like that. Okay. And then now we are ready to move to step four. This is where I was talking about where we're gonna attack down in between every two beads. So what you're gonna do next is I kind of with this thread that you know we pull through, kind of wrap it in between my fingers, almost like holding a gun like that. And I use these fingers to hold my thread. And I kind of just loop it around my index finger. And then hold it like that. Just to keep um, your thread tight. And then now, just use your thumb to kind of push those beads right at the beginning where we first put our thread through. And I just use my thumb to hold that down. Now, you are going to count two beads over. So here's your first bead, and here's your second bead. And then here's your third. So what we're going to do is from the outside right here, we are going to push our needle up in between your second and third bead. <clears throat> You can get that. You kind of get as close to the middle as you can. So you see how I got it pulled, or I pushed my needle up in between the second bead and the third bead, kind of close to that middle. And then you're gonna pull that all the way through. Okay, now we're gonna go in on the opposite side. So again, where this second bead and third bead is, instead of starting from the outside like we did, we're gonna start from the inside close to this Cat. And just push it right there, close to the middle, between that second bead and the third bead. And then you're going to pull it all the way through. Now that little tack down that you did, it holds it in place. So see, now if I let go, look, it's not moving. So I'll show you guys again how to do it. Because I know it is a little bit confusing. And really this part, it, it's practice makes perfect. <laughs> type of thing. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to move on to the next two beads. So we already, we skipped those two beads. So now we're going to go one, two. And then here's this next bead right beside it. So we're starting from the outside again. And you're going to push your needle up through your pillow. So 
So you're just going to go in between every two beads. So see? Kind of hard to focus. There it goes. Mm -hmm. So we're just starting it from the outside and getting as close to the middle as you can between those two beads. And then you want to pull it all the way through. If you're kind of lost or kind of need a little bit more better explanation, I guess, or more closer view, look through your book. I tried my absolute best to try to make it as, as clear as I could and to make it understandable for you guys. Because like I said, I know this part, it's a little bit confusing. Um, this is just the way that I, I learned to do it. Actually, Sam, she views hers a little bit different. <laughs> I thought I would try yours. <laughs> Not too good. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to go from the inside now. So you're going to go right here. In between those two beads again, and then move this other way. Like that. You're almost like you're building a bridge or making a bridge um, in between every two beads. You're kind of going under, over. Under. And back down, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going under, you're going over, and then back down. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. I was trying to keep it simple because that's what I tell myself now. <laughs> that's what I tell myself every time. I'm like, okay, did I go under? Am I under or over on this? Okay, so we're going and then pull that through. Let me try that. Maybe everybody will help make sense for a little bit more people. So you're gonna move on to the next two beads. So you're gonna start from under the pelon and pushing up in between the next two beads like that. From and you're gonna pull it all the way through. Now you're gonna go over back down into the pelon. Same as if you are on the other side in between those two beads. And then pull it all the way through. You know me. Come oh, no. up. <laughs> you might hear my pig. Okay, she got it now. All right. Yeah, I'm trying my best to explain it. <laughs> I'm not really good with words like Sam is. <laughs> Aww. Uh, sorry. If you guys hear that, that's my pig. She's kind of getting a little bit antsy out there. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go... Oh my lord. <laughs> oh. Poor Romy. Hi, Piggy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you just laugh? <laughs> I have a big, I have a, I, I, my pet pig. She's. Oh. I might have to go feed her. <laughs> just everybody be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're going to move on to these last uh, two beads right here. And we're going to go up through that pillow again. Pulling it all the way through. <laughs> and then we're going to go back down. <laughs> like that. Oh, 
And then you're going to pull it all the way through. Okay. She must not like being by herself right now. No, I don't think so. <laughs> they said, can we see the pig? <laughs> She's kind of big. Yeah. No. <laughs> She's cute, though. Oh, oh, oh. I can show you a picture because I'm trying to keep her from... I'm trying to make her act right, <laughs> if I can say. <laughs> but I'll show you guys. Hang on right quick. While everybody's getting there. Bead through. Oh, it went off. You may. So I'll show you what she looked like when I first got her. See, she's right there. My little bitty piglet. And then that's my so. sister. <laughs> that's my sister's dog. So she's about as big as a little, little puppy. When I first got her. <laughs> Now, if I can find that picture. <laughs> hey, look, I almost snorted. <laughs> can she do? I saw her sit <laughs> earlier when we got to Jasmine's house. She was like, "Oh, I think I need to. I need to feed Romy." So she got her food, and I was like, "Romy, you're getting so big!" And walked outside, and she was like, "Romy, sit. Romy, sit." And she just sat down like a dog. Man. My dog doesn't even do that. She's actually bigger than that, though. This is the <laughs> recent, most recent picture I have of her. I need to take another one. <laughs> but yeah, she can, she can sit, um, and we can even tell her to say please. So we'll, we'll tell her sit. So she'll sit, and we'll say uh, say please, and she'll like nod her head, like that's her way of saying please. And then we'll give her food to her. Yeah. My dog, Kevin, does not even do anything close to that. His nickname is Bohigo because <laughs> he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. <laughs> I can show this little oh, preview of... There she is. Eating her. She <laughs> loves apples. She loves grapes and strawberries. Those are her favorite. Oh, Romy. He listened to me when I told him to lay down. Okay, he knows how to lay down. He also knows if you don't listen, spank, spank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's my little piggy. Awesome. Well, my, not my little piggy. She's my big hog. I call her my hog. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Sometimes she gets a little fussy. <laughs> She's just baby. Yeah. Okay. Boss so... Hog. <laughs> I went ahead and tacked down in between every two. So after you do that, look how sturdy that is. It's not moving. You don't have any beads coming apart or coming up. Look how sturdy that is. You can even do in between every three or every four, whatever you like. Or every one bead. Oh, yeah, or every one bead. <laughs> I know some people who do that. I usually go every two beats. Okay, so after you do that, hang on, I seen somebody's chat pop up right quick. Anybody have any questions? I should have asked that first. Anybody have any questions? Oh, can't even just. How do I start? I just joined. Okay, um, do you have your book? Because we're just following along with our book. Okay. So if you look in your book. Yes. How do you tie down the last few? Oh, oh, everybody's good questions. Okay, hang on. <laughs> so, Cayman, we're just now on step four. So if you want to go ahead and read through uh, step one through uh, three. So you're just going to thread your needle and then tie a knot at the very end of your needle. And then you're just going to, to then uh, push your needle up through your pelon, just anywhere you would like just to start it.
and then pull your thread all the way through and then you can start stringing on your beads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you follow steps one through three and four, because that's what we're on right now, um, that should uh, help you on starting your, uh, your cap or beating your cap. Mm -hmm. Do you tie down the last bead? You can if you want to. I'm actually about to show you how I do that after I tack down in between every two. Oh, but I'll show you what I do after I do that. Where do you get supplies like these? Um, I get the cabs from online from, I think, I'm trying to think who has these. Indigenous, mm -hmm. uh, indigenous supplies. Indigenous Beating supplies. supplies yeah. I think it's indigenoussupplies.com. Mm -hmm. She has tons and tons of centers. Um, Delica Beads. Delica Beads shop mm -hmm. com. She, she has, has she has centers. She has beads. Um, I think she even has needles and thread. Mm -hmm. The pellet, we actually got this. This is like stiff felt, I guess, uh, from Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. Kind of like in the quilting section. And we bought a bunch, which we probably only use maybe a whole yard. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like, I think maybe like $6 a yard, something like that. But if you're just getting started, you might need half a yard or even a fourth of a yard. Yeah, doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. Even our glue, our glue that we have, we got this from Walmart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, like Sam said, this is like the holy grail. I think <laughs> it's the holy grail. I love it. I glue. love it too. <laughs> e six thousand is pretty good, but yeah, I'm hooked. Hey. Um, okay. How many rows are we doing? Uh, we're gonna try to do well. At least one row, because <laughs> uh, I know, like I said, it's a little bit confusing, and it's a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna start try to start you guys off of what trying to do with just one, just complete one row. If we have enough time to do two rows, we will do two rows. Mm -hmm. But at least just one, just to get you guys started. And then I'm even. I showed you guys this one where I finished this one. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to like attach your backing uh, as, um, along with your posts. But yeah, we're gonna try to do one. Okay, anybody else? So we're keep going. Yeah, okay. So after you get your beads tacked on, what I do next is see these last two beads. We're going to go up in between those last two. Kind of like as if we're about to tack it down. So see, we're just going to go up in between those last two beads. And then we're going to push it, your needle all the way through, and then you're going to pull your thread all the way through. Then, you kind of like flip it up like that. We're actually going to go through this last bead, almost like as if you are um, putting your uh, your beads back onto your needle. So see, you just kind of you just pushed your needle through that last bead, and then you're going to pull it all the way through. So that way. This gets you, gets you ready to start adding on another 10 beads. Mm -hmm. like so, and I kind of got ahead of myself again because <laughs> we kind of went through steps four through, um, where are we at? Steps four through 13, because I showed you guys how to attack in between each two. 
somebody said super nose has the same thing with you. Oh yeah, super nose. That's that's my spot. That's the go-to <laughs> place. Love a good road trip. Yeah. All right. And so once you have that, now you're ready to add on ten more beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and add on my ten beads. I don't know what pattern I'm doing. I'm trying to just go in with the flow. <laughs> Hopefully it comes out evenly. Maybe not, but we'll see. Okay, so I just added on 10 more beads. I kind of just repeated that pattern. And then once you get your 10 beads back on, then again, you're just gonna push it all the way down like so. And then you're just going to swing it over again. Oh, she has to leave. Okay. Well, thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we'll have it. We're having it recorded right now. We're going to have it uploaded to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, want to finish out the class with us on YouTube, <laughs> you can do that. But thanks again for joining us. Oh my gosh, I missed up. <laughs> Did you miss up? Oh yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Sam, let's let's show them. All right. Let me give you guys an example <laughs> of this happens. Like mistakes always happen. It does. So I had listened to Jasmine. I started following the books, and I mean, yeah. So I finished this one. Well, I was like, okay, I'm going to start my second row, which I tied the last one down, tacked it down, put it through the back. I did not start like the beginning and go from the back to the front. So from underneath to up. And I started doing my beads. <laughs> so I already got my pattern laid out and everything. And there's my beads. And it's down here on the bottom. So yeah, so I just got to take them off <laughs> and redo that again. <laughs> So cool. cow moves for me. <laughs> and that's okay because yep, it happens. I even do that. <laughs> like I I'll just be cruising along thinking I'm like, all right, I'm getting I'm making progress. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be done with this cat tonight. Then boom. Surprise. Figured out. <laughs> I forgot to push it back up through the pellet <laughs> and I've been trying to feed from the bottom. Oh. <laughs> that's good times and oh, and there goes my needle. <laughs> Alright, alright. Okay, so here's your tin beads. You're just going to swing it over, kind of put, tuck it underneath your thumb, have your thumb hold that, then push your needles back so that way it's touching from the last bead that you had put on. Then you get your needle, and you're going to go back down through the pellet. But we're going to leave that little bitty space. Because again, so you notice how whenever we tack it down, that it moved and it actually uh, moved all the way to the spot that we had originally pushed our needle down in. So just leave that little bit of the space. Right there. And then you're going to push your needle all the way down and then pull your thread all the way through. And then we're going to so pull it all the way through. Then I'm going to try again. I kind of get my middle finger, my ring finger, and my pinky and grip that thread in between there. Kind of have this little gun going on. And then I twist my finger around like so, just so it's helping to keep my thread tight. So I won't, it won't be loose. So you wanna kind of lay your beads down with your thumb and then push your, make sure to push those beads up so that way it meets the end of your first 10 beads that you had 
put on. And now you're going to tack down in between every two beads. So you're going to skip two. So one, two. And you're going to push it up in between that second and third bead, like so, from the outside, just like that. And then you're going to pull it all the way through. Okay. And now we're going to go back down through the pelon. but on the opposite side. Like so. So see, this is where you pushed it up. So you could just kind of going over and pushing it down onto the opposite side. And then you're gonna pull it all the way through. Uh oh, you uh, may have gotten it knotted up and you might have to, well, try to save it. I usually use my needle to kind of help pick it apart, I guess. Mm. <laughs> and then untangling my string. But if it's not able to be saved, Sadly, you're going to have to cut your thread. <laughs> I've done that many of the time. Yeah. Many, many, many of the time. <laughs> oh. I, re I remember I was trying to finish this one. Yes. Oh, yeah. It is a sad face. It is, it is sad. Like, I think I was halfway through um, this one uh, big pair of earrings I was working on, and could not get the knot out. Oh, I wanted to cry. I was so mad. So I just kind of put my thing down, went and got me something to snack on, and then came back and tried to get another. Still no go. Yeah. Except I do that many, many times. That's why I like using beeswax, just because it has that coating to help make it, I guess, a little bit thicker and to keep it from knotting up. But yeah, try, try your best to pick it out. It made a gap in yours. What do I do for that? Ooh. A um, gap? Is it like, I usually run mine back through. Do you do that? You uh, I do it sometimes if I need to. Mm -hmm. Um, Sam said to run it back through. So like, that's what I was about to do. It looks like, yeah. So sometimes it may look like he skip a bead. So what I do is like, I can't focus really good on that. But let's say there's a gap here. What you can do is if you're underneath, come back through. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> my, my big hands are over here on this side. Um, okay, good. Yeah. So go back up through it, up through to the top, pull it through, and then, whoopsie, I dropped my needle. See if I can pick it up. Nails ain't can walk around the with me. But see, like mine is not straight or it's not curved like I want. What you'll do is uh, along the top part, go through your beads. So you'll kind of go through all of them. Like I made it through half of them. And you can pull it and you can actually tighten it that way. I usually do this at the very end. Once I have completely like tacked all my beads down, then I'll run them through. But I can do that now. So you can wait till the end till you get it done because it'll just tighten them up and straighten it up for or 
straighten it up because it's yeah. hard. And so it looks a lot better now. So if it's like a big, big gap, that's one thing you could do. I have been known if it's something like for myself that I would add a bead in. It's okay. hard to do. <laughs> oh, it's hard to do, but you can do it. And since this is like the first time you're actually doing one, yeah, that's something I would suggest is like running it through back through your beads. Oh, she said it fixed it. Thank Yay! you. <laughs> I'm glad I helped because <laughs> it made mine not look so crooked. <laughs> the bead sizes are a little different. You know, keeps falling out. Want to go? Oh, oh, sorry, it came in. We're trying to read your comment. When I go through the bead, mm -hmm. if you want what I usually do, because mine falls out too a lot, so I always have to keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. So whenever you had first put it, thread your needle on, or thread your needle, mm -hmm. you have this little, oh, oh, where'd it go, where'd it go? This little tail, you know, from pulling it through, pull some more through. Mm -hmm. So that way it'll make it a little bit longer. And that should help. Just pull in your thread through your needle just a little bit more. Because I, like I said, I am bad at that. I, mm -hmm. I'll be trucking along too after I just started beating from the bottom and I fixed it. So then here I go again, trying to bead some more, and then my needle falls out, yep. then my beads come out. <laughs> oh, I just feel the heartbreak right there, <laughs> right there. I can feel it. Okay. Is there any <sighs> more questions, mm -hmm. like on tacking down your beads? Like I said, go through your book. I really, really tried to make it mm -hmm. simple. Easy to follow. Yeah, easy to understand. Yeah, and like, to be honest, this is the first time like I've actually did my beading in like sections like she's showing us. I usually do a full strand <laughs> and tack them down like that. And all right, Reagan, I can't wait to see those. So I'm ready for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's like other ways that you can do it. But the way that Jasmine is showing us, that's like one of the simplest ones. Oh, Dante. Dante. Can't get to the PC yet. I was going to say, I think, let me, let, I can pull it up on my phone. Okay. Dante. Dante. I'm trying to think. Dante, you are outside of the boundaries, correct? Outside of the reservation? In Kansas City. Okay. I was like, I think I remember soon it should have been mailed up. Mm -hmm. I may have to look because I know they sent us the notifications on those. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dante's your brother? Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh snap. No. This <laughs> is <laughs> Yeah, we sent that one out. Hmm. I'm trying to remember when we sent it out. We should have sent it out last week. Yeah, right? it should have went out last week. Um, Dante, can you send us a private chat to, like, send us your address in, in the chat, but just send it to myself. It'll be under Samantha. Yeah. So we can check and see that. Email them, yeah, well, I know for sure we sent it out because I remember your address. 
I'll double check the notifications, the tracking number, because we did get the tracking numbers on those and make sure but it should have been delivered oh who's leaving shady sky mm -hmm. oh okay. okay well again i'll just keep saying it every time somebody goes <laughs> um that our this is recorded so it'll be on youtube if you want to go ahead and finish it on mm -hmm. youtube you're more than welcome to um, you can even share it with your friends. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys can have your own beating party like we're having right now. <laughs> okay, she says she'll watch it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Oh, she said, uh, his sister said, Mel's been behind for a couple of days. Yeah, that might be. Hopefully that's what it is, that they're behind. Because mm -hmm. I know we had another issue with somebody like that who... Mm -hmm. We're trying to get theirs, and I was explaining to them that we sent it out, and then the next day they said, we got our package. I'm like, okay. Yeah, with all this Rona mess, it's kind of, it's slowing down our mail. Huh. Okay, so any more questions? Anybody else need help? What she said, Romanist. <laughs> exactly. Rona, man. I know it's affected my family big time. I just let y'all in. I have Rona. And it sucked. <laughs> it really sucked. And I'm not going to lie, I was one of those people that were like, oh, you know, they're hyping this up too much. It's nothing really serious, you know, like media stuff, you know. Of mm -hmm. course, media always tries to make everything bigger than it is or even downplay stuff. And I was actually one of those people who was like, oh, it's not that bad. It's probably just like the flu. Uh, it kind of is, but honestly... It's a, it's worse because I'm still, I got sick in early August, was it? It was actually yeah, at was, August. Yeah. I got sick in August and <clears throat> I'm still trying to get over the symptoms because it does affect your lungs and I can tell because now it's hard for me to like even do uh, strenuous work. Like even just cleaning my house, I get like my chest starts hurting um and even being out in the cold now that it's getting colder here in Oklahoma it kind of like hurts my chest a lot and so yeah I'm still trying to deal with that and even my mom my mom actually had it and she had the worst of it both me and her were really struggling I guess mm -hmm. to fully heal from it so be safe out there folks be safe be safe Okay, so whereabouts do we want to keep going? Has anyone started on like their second row or maybe even their third row? Or somebody needs help? Because mm -hmm. I can beat this sucker real quick and show you guys. <laughs> or we have the one that's already finished too. Any help with? Starting my second row. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I'll show you how you can start your second row. Give me a little bit. Give me about five minutes. One second. I'm past on my second row. Oh, but somebody else done. is on their second row. Okay. All right, no problem. Thanks for joining, Dante. I was like, I really hope it does come through quickly. Yeah, if not, let us know, because we'll send you an, another one. Mm -hmm. We'll grab out the post office and <laughs> someone else is on their second row. Awesome. And someone can't keep the needle or get the needle. Six set of 
have figuring out the ending. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. All right, awesome. Oh, and her Kevin's a heart shaped. Oh, okay, yeah. So there were different shapes of different cabs and centers like that. So, um, Cayman, are you are you able to thread your needle? Is that what's happening? Is that what's happening in there? Sometimes it's not sanitary, eh? but even if you moisten the end of your thread, you may need to cut it if it's starting to fray. So you might want to do that. If you moisten it just a little bit, it should be able to go through the eye of your needle. The needles are size 11 for the most part. Mm -hmm. So it should have a big enough eye where you're going to be able to get it through there. It's like or you may have to ask your mom to make sure she can do that for you. Tell Tiffany. Mm -hmm. um, I missed it, but that's all right. But it's okay. I only did one instead of two. So oh, spirit, spirit beat. I mean, like skit. Oh, spirit. So I'm going to try to get through this real quick because when you're ending your first row, sometimes it, you're not going to need 10. You're only going to need like maybe four or maybe only six mm -hmm. or sometimes maybe only even nine. <laughs> and so what you can do is, um, Add slowly add on your beads and test out the fitting. And remember to leave just a little bit of space for when you're tacking down. Usually if you need one to five beads, you can actually put your needle closer or like right next to your bead because when you tack down, it really doesn't move. But if you need five, uh, more than five, then make sure to leave that little bit of space. Because that's usually where it starts to move when you have more than five beads on. Alright, I'm getting there folks. I'm getting there. Okay, hey, how's everybody doing? I think everybody's concentrating right now. Yeah. It's quiet in the chat. <laughs> it is. I think I'm hoping that everybody's understanding and I'm hoping my instructions are clear. <laughs> because I know I test out for class one, the instructions, I actually tested them out with several of the staff in office and they were able to make their own without actually having to watch this video. Like Sam, she was able to finish it. <laughs> I could finish it. I didn't know how to start it. But I made a couple of pairs since then. Cute. Almost done with the second row. Okay, I can't. Oh no. I need to move them back through. Are you talking about back through the thread or back through like the row of the beads? back to the thread. Back to the thread. 
you can, uh, if you're trying to re-thread the needle, again, you may have to cut a little bit of it and then try it, moistening it, moistening it, wet it a little bit. It might be able to go through then. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna have, oh, my, my pattern's gonna be wonky. Look at it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Hey. Um, and another one too is like, at, I know like at Walmart, they sell them, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, stuff like that. Um, in the sewing section, if you aren't able to like thread your needle, things like that, they have one and I actually don't know what it's called. I forget what it's called. It's uh, I think it's called a threader. It might be a threader, yeah. And it's just like a little bitty thing about this big. It just kind of goes through and you put your thread through it and then you put it through the eye of your needle and it's supposed you pull your needle or you pull your thread through and yeah. I was like, oh, that's pretty simple. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do. But. <laughs> yeah, because I try to do that with my sister. It's a lot of work. My mom, both my mom and my sister have a hard time threading their needle. And so I tried to do it for my sister and I broke it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's how you finish your row. So you have just a little bit of space left. Um, don't mind my pattern because it's a wonky. Usually if this happens, I take it all apart <laughs> until <laughs> I get it. But, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and so pick up your beads. Uh, it looks like I may only need six probably. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and let me try six. So I'm going to test out six first. Okay, so see, it's actually too big because it won't fit through there. So it looks like five might actually work. So I'm going to take this last bead off, this uh, six bead that I had on. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And then see, it'll fit because once I push it on there, it'll complete that row. So then I'm going to put five, so it's all about testing out your, your fitting. And then I go through three beads from the start of the row, like that. So like I'm about to string them back on. I just go through those three beads like that. And then I pull it all the way through. Like so, and you'll see right where it came out. And then, once you have that, you're going to push it back down. So right where your thread's coming up right next, or from that uh, bead, you're just going to push it down. And pull it all the way through. And uh, see if it's, but I'm gonna pull it out for you guys so you can see. See, that's where my five beads are. You're just pulling it. And then you're gonna go ahead and continue tacking down every two, if you want, or every one. So I have five on, so I'm gonna only do that this first, this first one. Okay. 
And so, like I said, just tacking down in between every two of those beads that you just added on. And that's the end for mine because I only had five. And look, got the first row on. Don't mind my pattern again. Like I said, it's, I know it's off. <laughs> but, you know, trial and error, guys. Trial and error. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now to start your second row, all you're going to do is kind of how you pushed your needle up to get as close to your <clears throat> your center like you did with the first one that's what you're going to do here so you're just going to push it up through the side of your first row make sure you leave just that little bitty gap like that pull that all the way through and now you can start all over again. Just add it on your tin beads. Oh, did he? Or somebody had a question. Oh yeah, the gap one again. Same thing, yeah, same thing as like before. If you have a gap or my bad. <laughs> We're on opposite sides of the table. Um, but like let's say you have a gap here, what you can do is um starting from the back, go let's see, go through the back. So mine's like on the second row. Whoopsie, whoopsie. My eyeball's not working for me today. And I'm actually going in between my first row and my second row. And I need to tighten up my second row. There's a gap. And so I'm going to pull my needle all the way through it. And then anywhere I'm going to start, I'm just going to go back through my beads. I'm going to go back all the way through my row completely through, I'm gonna pull them, pull my string, and I'm just gonna keep going through them. I know you might get stuck, or you might actually get a knot there, or get tangled up, but you can pull it through and keep going. Let's see. And just keep going. Oops. You can go by those sections, whatever you have. And then, let's see, I'm almost done. Oops, see. Get that one. And one more. And all you're doing, Kim, is you're just tightening it up. So I've gone all the way through. I've sent my needle all the way through them. I'm just going to pull it and tighten it as much as I can without breaking it. I just get it a little tighter. So it kind of fixed my gap. I have a teeny tiny one there because I have four beads on all the rest of them and there's three on these. <laughs> I tried to even it up. So yeah. Oops. And there. That's how you tighten it up. My tail's here. I'm going to start or I might finish that, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. There you go. All right. So any more questions? Got 30 minutes, probably. Might show them how to finish it. Mm -hmm. Where are you guys at? Let us know. We want to hear y'all. Mm -hmm. We want to know where y'all's at.
Okay, so how do you start the second row? Okay, so somebody else just started to start the second row. Oh, smile. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So to start your second row, kind of like how you first you started your first row, you are going to push your needle up right beside um, the first row. We're kind of struggling. <laughs> no. Don't worry. You're okay. You're yeah. okay. Like I said, I know this is like kind of advanced a little bit or not advanced, but you know, a little bit more challenging, I guess. Mm. But you can get it. Yeah, it's really one of those trial and error things. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to answer how to start second row. Okay. So after you finish your first row, you're just going to get your needle and go back up. You can start anywhere you want. Just going to get your needle and go back. Oops, that's too far. Up through your pelon. Like so. Like how you start at your first row. And then make sure you have that little gap in there. Take right here. Just that little gap. You're just starting right beside your first row. And then you're going to pull it all the way through. And then you're ready to start all over by adding your 10 beads on again and then tacking down in between every two. Okay. Is anybody getting close to finishing? I think somebody said they were getting close. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. You're just like starting the steps all over again. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh who's Reagan? Oh, oh, she's almost done. Now, Cayman, I'm still trying to figure out is it knotted or like did you go around your pelon? Like if you started tacking it down while it was still wrapped around? I've done that before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I couldn't save it, but I think what I had to do was I had to take off my needle oh, and yeah. use my needle to get out of that. Uh, so what I would suggest is actually, I know you probably just got your needle on, <laughs> but is to take off your needle and then use your needle to pull out the last string that or last piece of your thread that you used and then just kind of go from there and just pull that thread out because it'll loosen up and then you're able to pull it out and kind of start back again you said okay oh her thing popped good hmm. Oh, oh, there we go. Later. Later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to finish off your earring. Just so that way, you know, I know some of y'all are probably not done yet or getting close to finishing. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you. And then um, you can always reference back to our video. So I actually, which I showed you guys had finished this one. So this is just two rows. Oh, can't really hear you suddenly. Uh, can you guys hear me now? 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Everybody here? Yes, we got another yes. Is that an echo? I don't think so. Okay, I think everybody can hear now. We might have had a little bit of technical difficulty thing. <laughs> okay, so I already have this one finished, like I was saying. And uh, what I'm going to do is from the back, after you finish your second row, from the back, you are going to actually make a knot as close as you can to this. So I usually just, you're just going to make a little knot again. And what I usually like to do is kind of just hold this so I can get it. I think I got it fixed up. Okay, there it goes. So I kind of just try to hold it as close as I can to here. <laughs> I can get this. I'm kind of, okay, there we go. Mine got wrapped around my shoelace. Hey. Okay, so I just try to hold it as close as to where I want it to go. So I usually just put my thumb on there and then go ahead and pull. So that way it makes that knot close down to where I want it. So that's all you're doing is just you're going, you're making a knot right there. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and cut it. Then you're actually going to cut off this excess pellet. Be careful not to get too close to your row right here because sometimes you can clip off your thread on the back and it'll make it come apart. So I usually just leave just a little bit of space and you can always go back and trim it down if you need to. Like that and just cutting yes. it out. And then, like I said, you can go ahead and trim it wherever you think. It's all quiet in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice and quiet. Oh no, somebody just logged in from Arizona. They catch the name. She forgot the time difference. Oh no, same, same. Yeah, we're two hours ahead from Arizona. Yeah, we'll have this recorded and uploaded on YouTube. So don't worry, you can follow along right th uh, with us <laughs> through there. Okay, so yeah, so I'm just trimming everything down, trying to make it as neat as I can. I'm just, I'm always scared of cutting off too much and then cutting my, my thread and then feeling sad because then I got to start all over again. Do you ever, um, almost, I guess, singe your edges like that? No, I didn't think about doing that. Is that what y'all do? Mm hmm Oh, ah, well. Yeah, because, like, it keeps it, I guess, I feel like it keeps it a little sturdier. Uh-huh. Like, it, and sometimes, like, whenever you're edging it, like, your 
needle will go through the pellet a little bit. Oh. On mine it is. So on there it gives it a little bit of a barrier. Well, I'm letting it thanks, guys. Tips and tricks, y'all. Tips and tricks. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna have to try that next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I just cut it out like that as best as I could. Yeah. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to get your backing. And also, you're going to get your post. Like so what I like to do, sometimes I'll trace it out. Did you hear that card? Yeah, <laughs> I thought someone was here. <laughs> oh, someone didn't get a post. Oh, what? Oh, my Lord. We're slacking, guys. We are sorry. <laughs> so many bags. And we also gave... Uh, hopefully we got you hooks. Are there hooks in there, earring hooks? Kind of like the ones from the last class. They look like those. Oh, we said. Okay, so somebody got the hooks. If not, we can, I hope. Reagan is in this group. We can Yeah, we can send some. Um, like, oh, these supplies too, you can find at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, um, pretty much any craft store. Walmart. Yeah. And they're really, honestly, they're really cheap, like the price wise. They're like maybe $3 and you get like, like 50 or more. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch in there. Yeah. So, or. We'll send you some. We promise. We'll send you some. Man, we slap. So, yeah, we slap. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So, so sometimes I like to trace it out onto here. I'll trace my cab around there and then cut it. But I think I'm going to show you guys a different way. So what I do is <laughs> then I get um, my... Uh, glue. <laughs> they said Romy. Yep, they hear Romy. <laughs> <laughs> so I get my glue, and you're just going to put a little dab onto here. <laughs> It must be good in time for her. I think, oh yeah, that's what it is. Okay, there it is. <laughs> it was like your glue was making that sound. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, so I just put a little bit of dollop, just a little bit of glue on there. And then we're just gonna put it directly into onto the center on the back of your earring. She's mad. She is. It's her din din time. She's hangry. We're trying to be quiet because usually if you're quiet, she'll calm down. <laughs> okay, I think she went away. Okay. Um, so I just put it right directly into the center, into the middle of my cap. Hopefully you can see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm right here. I can see it. But <laughs> I can see it on her screen too. So Okay. And then usually I leave that just for a little bit and let it dry. I'm going to try to speed it up. <laughs> and like with the backing that we gave you guys, most of that is leather and it's like a faux leather and again you can buy this like at Hobby Lobby. You may just want to get like half a yard because this comes like on big bolts so yeah. it's like a big big bolt and but we also brought others so you could see like what other people use too. Um, okay at Hobby Lobby they actually have um, like different types of felt and it's like heavy felt. 
so this is one so it's got like a pattern and you can cut it as like somebody has cut it here and use it just like how Jasmine's going to show you guys to use it on here but there's one like this and I like using the sparkly heavy cut I know that Jasmine likes to use it as well and so at Hobby Lobby they have them where you can buy them in sheets and they're about a dollar ninety nine sometimes on sale and I feel like sometimes you can actually find them at um like Walmart but not too sure about that but yeah so there's like all different types of colors um people use um a lot of different backings and we just wanted to show you a couple of them that we had we don't actually use these these are kind of like for our show right now because we're using um the ones that you know everyone else has too and some of them get really fancy like this one with like flower patterns. I have some that have like flowers. I am actually afraid of sock monkeys, but this is a felt that somebody had and it's sock monkeys. So if you like sock monkeys, you can get that. I don't know, they're kind of scary to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's like all different types of pens and stuff like that. So what you would basically do still, even though these are kind of thicker and they're a little bit more sturdy than, well, kind of than your um, leather. You can still cut it in the shape you want and then you'll just cut a little piece and use it for your backing and it works out pretty nice. It gives it a little bit of bling. Ooh, and cactus. so, I know I saw the cactus one. I was like, well, that's cute. So Arizona folks, Phoenix area, y'all might be able to find some cactus kind. So that would be cool, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna move on now. Trying to catch my breath. <laughs> Trying to hurry. Feed, feed my piggy. Let's oh. see. Okay. So next what I do is when you're gonna grab your backing. There's a the right way, which is the leather. You can see the leather. And then the mm -hmm. wrong way, which kind of feels like I guess a little bit rough. Mm -hmm. And then what I do and this leather that we gave y'all it's really easy to like poke through um it's not really like real leather yeah it's faux, it's faux leather so mm -hmm. I just get my earring and I actually just poke it in the back see just kind of what I do is use my index to kind of hold that just in case it's not dry it all the way and then we'll go ahead and push it through kind of put my finger behind it just to kind of help it go through and then like that see it's that easy okay so now what i do i take that back off because now i have where my hole is where I can put it. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. I have my hole. Then I go ahead, put glue back onto my earring. There you go. So we got that glue all the way on the back. And then you're just gonna go back into that little hole you made, that pre-made hole. And then just stick it down right in there and then kind of press it down. Smash it. Yeah, smash it down. And then you'll let that dry for a little bit. And that's why we highly recommend this quick grip because it dries like really fast. fast. Mm -hmm. Quick. Yeah. It gives a quick grip. <laughs> quick grip. 
We need to be sponsored. It's true story. Quick, we're, if you ever watch this <laughs> later on, just, you know, give you services a shout out. We would gladly, gladly advertise your product. <laughs> I mean, you know, if, no, I'm just kidding. Well, no. if, if you want to make a donation to us, I to our youth, oh, yeah. E3, youth council. Nah. <laughs> or E6000? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. the other glue. Yeah. That's a good glue, too, except it doesn't dry as quickly. Like, you'll have to let it sit for a while. And it stinks. I hate how it stinks. It's got a very strong odor. To oh, it. yeah. She said she uses mm. 36000. Yeah. I try this. I um I want to <laughs> she said yeah it smells. This yeah. does not smell. Yeah. I mean I'm just letting you know. <laughs> yeah. It's got a tiny, tiny one, but it's it just smells like glue. Yeah. I guess like glue just smells like glue. But it's not as strong as E6000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that there are like jewelry glue that you'll see like at the stores, craft stores, place like that. Yeah. And Sometimes you're able to use those, but most of the time it's not gonna give a good hold, like a permanent hold for yeah. your thing. So that's why we suggest that. I think it's good for just like maybe tack up uh, putting on your little jewels, mm -hmm. but then after that, mm, yeah, uh, I don't uh, think so. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we got just like a few more minutes left. Okay. So then after you get that, all you're going to do is next is just cut it. Just cut right around your, your little cab you got going on there. I feel like Bob Ross. Uh -huh. you know, this is a little happy tree. I hope you guys know who Bob Ross is. I'm surprised you know who Bob Ross is. <laughs> really? I'm honestly surprised. Bob Ross, man. Y'all need to go watch him. He's He's got a lot of good advice. I feel like I was there. Hey. <laughs> when he was there. Yeah. Bob Ross is just... Uh, he's just a happy little man. He's got skills. <laughs> I was like, he's he got does. Skills. If you want to learn how to paint, watch Bob Ross. And then there you go. You can always clean up around the edges if you need to. Um, Cause I'm a perfectionist, so I know I usually do. <laughs> but Same. if you want to keep it like that, you can. You can always edge them too, which is a little bit more advanced. So that's why we really didn't include that in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to edge. Um, there's even rhinestone banding you can add. Um, there's like the plastic ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's the metal one. When I need edging, this is what I need. Putting this. And then see, I got a different backing on here. And this one's metal rhinestone banding that's around it. But yeah. This is a finished earring I actually have for an order, I guess. An order, so that's what it would look like when you edge it. And then if you were to put a metal rhinestone banding, there's the plastic one too, which I don't have because I like the metal ones. <laughs> I like all colors. But yeah. And there you go. You finished your cab. Yay! And you can always move this too. You don't have to put it directly in the middle. Do you want to put it a little bit more closer up here just because um, the placement of your, how you want it to be placed onto your ear. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be in the middle. Usually I put it in the middle when it's like smaller, smaller ones. Yeah, there you go, guys. So that's how you would finish your cab. Now it's ready to go out on the town. And start feeling like the bougie native that you are. <laughs> I 
was like, I have a few more to tack down on mine. Yeah, so like if you guys are, I know like during the last class and stuff like that, um, you sent us some of the pictures of what you had, things like that. If you want to send that again, we'll put our number into the chat and you can send that to us so we can take a look at it. And if you need help or something like that, you can totally do that too. Let's see. Trying to think of it. We'll put that in there. Oh, really trying to think. Cool. Trying to think of her again. <laughs> but yeah, so there it is in the chat. Oh, here we go. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. So if you want to send a picture of it to us, and uh, we'll put a little blurb up about how the beating class is and how it went and everything, you can do that. And I hope that this has helped you. Jasmine and I both hope that this has helped you. Jasmine is a very good teacher when it comes to this. And uh, I know she had a little tickle in her throat. Um, but as far as like for the books, um, we will try to get you those as soon as we can. I think that's Easton. So um, one of our coworkers, he actually um, is in the Muskogee area. So we can see if uh, we'd be able to send some books with him. Um, Send us an email also if you have any other questions or anything like that. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, so you, uh, we can, you know, get you the things that you do need if it was not included in your um, kit and everything. Um, and I think, I think that is it for now. Um, Jasmine, you have anything else? Um, no. Like she said, um, we have uh, our numbers down at the bottom, uh, our emails. You can always even call the office. Mm -hmm. um, we're more than happy to help you in, even if you need maybe a little bit more beads. Um, of course, if you need a book, yeah. <laughs> if you need an earring post. You know we got you and that was on our part we kind of we slacked off <laughs> but we had we had tons and tons of people register for the classes we yeah i think we served probably over it was over i think we had about 89 registered yeah yeah um and i know that we were still they were sent out. Some still do need to be picked up. Some mm -hmm. need to be met. And those are for later classes too. So, and if you can't see us, we are here. <laughs> we, I don't know if you, you can see us or anything like that, but we are here. Oh, so, um, yeah, it's six o'clock. Um, so we thank you guys for staying with us for these two hours. And I hope that this really has helped you. I know that I had fun. I finished mine. I just have to <laughs> cut it out and everything. And I made a little one, so that took a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Mado to Jasmine. Thank you guys for dealing with my throat <laughs> and my piggy. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> she was good last time. She was quiet, but I guess she was just hungry this time. <laughs> All right, yes. Okay, yep. We did get those pictures. We didn't get to look at it yet because we have one phone going and we have the <laughs> iPad going so we can see everything. So we'll check that in a minute yeah. and everything. So yeah, well, thank you guys. Thank you all for joining us. And um, if you post it or share it like on social media, whatever you finish, hashtag Muskogee Youth Beads so then we can see it and then we can share and like it and everything too. So. Yeah. yeah, thank you guys, and we will see you guys November 4th for our last class. If you signed up for that class, we'll see you then. So, all right, Mado. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, cute.